We've seen LeBron now in seven straight finals. But Stephen A, let me ask you this, because we talk about this with the Patriots sometimes. Do you think people are starting to have LeBron fatigue? Do you want to see I someone else? I know I am. Um, I believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to lose in the NBA Finals. I have been on the record on many occasions. I don't want to see LeBron James with six NBA Finals losses on his resume, particularly under these conditions. Now, if you go into a series and it's legitimate, like it's up for grabs, all right, then I want to see what you got. But the outcome is a foregone conclusion. We all know that Cleveland, can, Cleveland, if they're lucky enough to get past Boston, which looks daunting at this particular moment, ends up getting to the NBA Finals. We all know there's no way in hell they're winning the championship, particularly if they end up going against Golden State, which I predict is going to happen. I think Golden State will win the Western Conference Finals. But I'm here to tell you something right now. I don't want that. I don't want to see that. And, and more importantly, I don't want to see the narrative of LeBron has to do everything. LeBron carried everybody. Look at what LeBron James has done just to get to this point. I actually want a competitive, relatively unpredictable or intriguing NBA Finals, and I think LeBron James' presence with this particular team doesn't deliver that. I find Boston to be far more compelling. I find Boston to be far more interesting. And let me tell you something right now. If I'm wrong, I will be so happy that I'm wrong about Cleveland getting to the finals this year because I'm here to tell you something right now. Boston, with those young athletes, those thoroughbreds, with the, who are athletic and fast and can shoot and can defend, I like the idea of seeing them in the finals against Golden State or Houston. I think either series is six games, potentially seven. And more importantly, I know they're not going to be scared and they're going to be in attack mode with absolutely nothing to lose. And by the way, Max, that crowd in Boston, I got to tell you, at TD Bank Garden, for those of you out there who have not had an opportunity to go to Boston and watch these dudes play in that arena, particularly this time of year, you are missing a treat. It is something special to watch the Boston Celtics in front of that crowd because that crowd is one of the best in all of sports. I absolutely love watching games live at TD Bank Garden with that crowd because they are sensational. They really are. Well, if there's a game five, I'll be there to check the crowd out, Stephen A., OK, um, if there's a game, if there's a game five, is LeBron fatigue a real thing? Of course it is. LeBron James has been better for longer than anyone in the history of basketball. So naturally, there'll be fatigue. He's been so great that, yes, in a weaker Eastern Conference, he's in the finals every single year. Naturally, there's going to be some fatigue. And I'm here to tell you, Stephen A., you and everyone who has LeBron fatigue, fools. Just, I mean, appreciate what you are watching here. You're watching an unprecedented sustaining of, of, of uh, nearly the, the highest level of greatness we've ever seen. The closest thing in value to Michael Jordan at his peak, sustaining it longer than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did. I mean, it's absurd what we're seeing here. Now, the real fatigue we have, if you really want to analyze it, Stephen A., we have Golden State dominance fatigue. You know, that's one of the reasons the Rockets are so exciting. But even Golden State's dominance is a reaction. It's a response to LeBron James. Because even that 73-win team looked at LeBron and said, damn, it's not enough. We need to add KD. Once they added KD, it's like Barry Bonds on the juice. You know, the, the, the best player in the game is now, you know, 10 times better than he was. Well, it's just unfair. It's turning it into like a cartoon. That's what... Golden State has done, and that's where the fatigue really is. Like, damn, we're just going to see Golden State run through everyone again? Well, that's where the fatigue is. Not really. I, so, I, so do I people have LeBron fatigue? Yeah, but look what wound up happening from I it. I completely disagree with you. I completely disagree with you. There's no Golden State fatigue. You know why? Because there's a multitude of weapons to create interesting storylines. It's not just one person. It's Steph, it's Kevin Durant, to a lesser degree, it's Clay Thompson. You see the marksmanship and what they bring to the table, and there's a multitude. It's like a numbers game. There's a multitude of bodies and a multitude of storylines. We just finished sitting up here talking about Draymond Green's mother, for crying out loud. When you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, there's one story. There's one story that matters, and the one story is LeBron James. And what I'm saying is, is that even when you look at Boston, 
and you're looking at Brad Stevens one minute. You're looking at Jalen Brown another. You're looking at Jason Tatum, which makes you think about the Philadelphia 76ers and the Boston Celtics swapping the picks to Danny Range heist, as, uh, as some folks have said. You look at a guy like Terry Rozier, who's a third-year player out of Louisville, balling, wondering about Kyrie Irving and whether or not he should be traded because of the assets that you have if you're the Boston Celtics. There's so many storylines, and I think that that combined with the fact of how Boston is playing makes for a better NBA Finals. I'm right, telling you right now, I, I predict this, Max. I predict this, Max. Yep. If LeBron James doesn't make the Finals, the ratings will not dip.